Magandang gabi, Pilipinas. Good evening, fellow Filipinos. Good morning and good afternoon to the other participants from the other parts of the world who are with us for tonight's session. Welcome to the IGP's 244th free international webinar. Thank you so much for joining us in this wonderful session. Once again, I am your host, Mr. Rian Jun P. Kualing from Aklan, Philippines, and I will be in charge for tonight's activity. I am a senior high school mathematics teacher of Batan Academy a National School in the Department of Education, Division of Aklan, Philippines. And it is a great honor and privilege to be in the IGP as one of its consistent webinar hosts, and of course, to be one of the thousand active members around the globe. It is my delight to welcome you all in this institution of Global Professionals Free International Webinar. I hope everyone will stay active to participate in our activities this later, especially for IPTs, or you to have a chance to win the certificate. And before we continue, you our webinar is going to be I'll share a message for us in the comment box so that and be able to share with them the knowledge that our speaker will impart to us in this wonderful world. Because in this wonderful world, we can watch together and learn together. The events and activities that IGP provide to us, dear participants, are proofs that pandemic does not just bring challenges and difficulties in life, but also it offers a lot of opportunities for us to learn and grow professionally. For the new members, let me give some backgrounds about IGP. IGP stands for Institute of Global Professionals and it is an ISO certified education institute and has certified trainings and webinars that is reflected in the e-certificate that each participant will receive after attending every session. It is recognized internationally and globally accredited to more than 100 countries. IGP is a leading online skill development institute with thousands of learners worldwide. IGP serves the world communities by providing holistic social work and education to help build a world with a strong foundation of education and life skills. IGP gives opportunities accessible for every knowledge seeker to gain mastery of skills, develop personality, to become more goal-oriented, to become uh, confident in facing any circumstances in life, and to enhance skills by inviting great speakers and professionals from the other parts of the world. The organization believes that skills development is not only gained through a formal education, so IGP offers free international virtual training and consultation to young professionals who are willing to learn, improve, and embrace changes. IGP organizes webinars, trainings, both offline and online courses with the best and highly trained speakers and coaches from all corners of the world to create a best learning platform for all of us Dear participants. So before we continue again, please share, tag, comment, and mention your friends in the comment box. It also serves as your support to our organization. Moreover, participants who will attend to this free international webinar will receive an e-certificate that they can use in the future. Today, we are presenting the 244th free international webinar series entitled The New Trends in Education Part 2, The Multiple Teaching, Instruction, and Modalities. Just to give you an idea, this series is fully composed of five parts, and part one was already discussed last November 1, 2021. And we are about to discuss tonight the part two, and part three, part four, and part five will be discussed on November 12, 20, and 28, respectively. We have two speakers for tonight from the Philippines who will give us more ideas and insights regarding the topic, and they will be introduced later as they deliver their lectures. Meanwhile, to our dear participants, you can take down your questions and queries about their lectures, and later on, we will have our question and answer part where you can address your questions and queries to our speakers. Okay, so now it's time to start our program. Our first speaker is a principal one from the school's division of 
Zambales, Philippines. Without a longer introduction, let us welcome Ma'am Francia T. Labandelo. Okay, good evening from the Philippines. I am happy to be with you today. Hello, ma'am. I think you are muted. Okay. <laughs> so, good evening from the Philippines. I am happy to be with you today to share with you some insights on how to effectively answer the needs of our learners. So, I am Francia Tila Bandello, Principal One of Longapo City and serving SDO Sambales, Philippines. So I will be sharing with you uh, some insights on <coughs> differentiated instruction. Okay, so, so we are discussing differentiated instruction. Okay. What is differentiated instruction? So differentiated instruction improves learning outcomes, increase engagement, inspire a love of learning, and increase self-awareness, and also helps students learn more effic efficiently and with deeper understanding. So... Uh, when we say differenti differentiated instruction, we mean tailoring instruction to meet individual needs. What do we mean by tailored instruction? When I say tailoring of instruction, this means that we should know how to vary the level of content to your present learners. Okay. And how shall we do it? Okay, so we say differentiated instruction is the tailoring of educational experiences to meet individual learner needs. Is It is not a new thing to us. Hardworking teachers have always recognized the diverse needs of students and adjusted their instruction to account for them. Through one-on-one -on -one coaching session, small group activities, individualized course packets, reading assignments and projects, teachers and are addressing a range of student levels interest, strength, weaknesses, and goals in their classroom today. So how do we do uh, differentiated instruction? When we have differentiated instruction, we have valuing and planning for diversity of heterogeneous settings. Lessons be assigned for students' needs. This is necessary for success with standard for a, for a broad range of learners. Okay. Also, we use whole group, small group, and individual tasks based on content and students' needs. Okay, so how, how shall we do these things? We do these things to meet the needs of our students. For example, we created study groups for reading. We have different students with, with high, average high, average, and below average groups. Enjoy this time working with small groups so all students get to participate and show what they know. Get them to participate in their highest potentials, even with the non-readers in your class. We also make changes in the classroom to allow students to work in a comfortable environment. You can have a classroom with, with no desk, sit in a coach or chair, in a in a big in a big rug, they can move locations during the day. Okay, so differentiated instruction is difficult and time-consuming work. However, class sizes are increasing and all the time making individualized learning harder to achieve. New adaptive learning technology can assist teachers and augment their effort 
by recommending which concepts to focus on with a learner or an entire class and by providing instructors and students themselves with information about their concept level, strength, and weaknesses. So when we say, uh, when we have pur purposeful use of flexible groupings, these are student-focused way of thinking about teaching and learning, address learning and effective needs. Okay, so we have four elements of differentiated instruction. Number one is content. When we say content, this represents the materials, concepts, and skills being taught. All students receive the same core content designed to meet the standards, but the teacher adjusts the complexity. When we say complexity, this is about how hard one content is based on the student's readiness, interest, and learning styles. The second one is process. So the, the second element of uh, differentiated instruction is process. This refers to how the information is delivered. Teachers strive to find the right fit of independent learning. One-on-one -on -one teachers support more scaffolding, working in pairs, or small group activities. Lessons are presented so they speak to many learning styles using graphics. Another element is uh, we have the product. Teachers provide options for students to demonstrate what they have learned. In addition to using opportunities for students to choose from written reports, so you are giving the students to choose what kind of product they, they will rep represent. We have written reports, example. We have oral presentation and art or technology projects essay or anything that they can uh, they can serve as a product okay the next element is we have the learning environment differentiated instruction can also extend the students comfort level in the classroom this can be achieved by giving students option for learning environment so your students have the options on what kind of environment they want for learning okay so differentiated instruction is difficult and this advancement allow teachers to make the most of class time, leaving students neither overwhelmed nor bored. So differentiation is also a way of teaching. It's not a program or package of worksheets. It asks teachers to know their students well so they can provide each one with experiences and tasks that will improve learning. Okay, this is from Carol and Tolmison. And he said that differentiation means giving students multiple options for taking in information. So this is not a program or a package of worksheets, but then we're giving the students options for taking all the information needed. Okay, it also means that you have to observe and understand the differences and similarities among students and use this information to plan instruction. What are the key principles that form the foundation of different differentiating instruction? So we have uh, different principles that is uh, behind differentiated instructions. Okay. okay, number one is we have the ongoing formative assessment. So when we say ongoing formative assessment, this is teachers continu continually assess to identify students' strengths and areas of need so they can meet students where they are and help them move forward. So they are being diagnosed where they are, what are the things they need, and the, what are their learning needs because we are uh, answering the needs of uh, varied kinds of learners. So... Uh, we use frequent formative assessment to determine the needs of each student. Traditionally, we have used assessment to measure how much our students have learned up to a particular point in time. But then teachers should focus on assessment for learning. So we use assessment for, for learning. 
formative assessment support learning during the learning process. For example, we have summaries and reflections. Students stop and reflect, make sense of what they have heard or read and derive personal meaning from their learning experiences. Okay, another one is we have the list, charts, and graphic organizers where students will organize information and make connections and note relationship with the use of various graphic organizers. So teachers should continually assess to identify students' strengths and areas of needs so they can meet students where they are and help them move forward. Okay, another one is we have the recognition of diverse learners. The students we teach have diverse level of expertise and experience with reading, writing, thinking, problem solving, and speaking. Ongoing assessment enable teachers to develop differentiated lessons that meet every student's needs. So we have uh, all students bring unique perspective, approaches and experiences, preferences, learning styles, addressing this wide variety of characteristics presents a considerable challenges. We should design a framework. So when we assess their needs, we are now uh, should, should design one framework centered on providing all students in the course with an equal opportunity to learn. Acknowledge that all students don't learn the same way and encouraging teachers to allow students the freedom to customize their learning. So the word there, or the keyword there is to customize their learning according to their strengths and weaknesses. It also develops purposeful engagement in learning. It develops reflecting skills and critical thinking. Okay. We have the group work. So students collaborate in pairs and small groups whose membership changes as needed. So uh, this becomes interactive because students will join groups and they will try to work in pairs or small groups depending on how they want it. Some students are introvert and some are extrovert. Uh, so learning in groups enables students to engage in meaningful discussion and to observe and learn from one another. So this, this makes learning interactive. Then we have problem solving. The focus in classroom that differentiate instruction is on issues and concepts rather than the book okay, or the chapter. This encourages all students to explore big ideas and, and expand their understanding of key concepts. So it is not important that they will memorize the content of the book, but they will have to uh, explore the ideas with that, with what, with all the things they have read and expand their, un their understanding of key concepts. Okay. Teachers offer, another one is the choice. Teacher offers students choice in their reading and writing experiences. And in the tasks and projects they complete, by negotiating with students, teachers can create motivating assignments that meet students' diverse needs and varied interests. So they could present their activity or reports finding in any way they wanted. For example, they wanted to... Uh, present their work in a form of commercial, a poster, a skit, an essay, a flip book, or a stage play. Our students are so creative that they can present it in varied forms. So it's their choice on how to present their product of learning. Students are given the choice of where they want to stand, whom they want to sit by also. So they can move in locations as long as their focus is on the learning in whatever choice they want. But still, we have to uh, we have to emphasize that they are learning. We have we have to assure that 
all learners are learning with all the concept that we want to give. Okay, so there are data that supports differentiation in reading. So we want to focus on re reading. And these are uh, based on research. We have the following data. Okay, so according to Fontas and, and Pinel in 20, uh, 2001, most primary teachers differentiate reading instruction through guided reading. However, the landscape often changes when students enter fourth grade. Study shows that these students' personal reading lives and their delight in reading start to wane. And by middle school, and by middle school, they read less on their own than they did in the early grade. So this is a study from Fantas and Pinel, wherein primary teachers have reading instruction through guided readings. And in their fourth grade, their love of reading started to wane and by middle school they they read less on their own than they did in the early grades okay so when their love of re reading is waning we have to add a diet of tough textbooks and less time for reading instruction to this diminished interest in personal reading so the result is far too many students reading below grade levels struggling, struggling to learn. The United States Department of Education noted that more than 8 million students in grade 4 through 12 are struggling readers. That is in 2003. High school students in the lowest 25% of their class are 20 times more likely to drop out, out of school than excellent and proficient learners. So these are data that we need to differentiate our instruction. So whether they are from middle and upper class income levels, from low income household, from families living in poverty or from families who are English language learners, 70% of learners will benefit from differentiated instruction. So we have the learners in different walks of life and they benefited from differentiated instruction. This is a powerful statistics that we teachers need to remember and act upon as we teach reading. Right now, too many middle school place students in a curriculum in which everyone reads the same text and completes the same assignment. Unfortunately, this leaves too many students behind instead of moving them forward. This is from Tom Linson to, uh, to 2002. So these are the data on uh, the importance of differentiated instruction in reading. Okay, so we have practices to differentiate reading instruction. Okay, number one is to read aloud. Make your read aloud a common teaching text. Okay. So we have to encourage the child to get involved in the story by describing pictures and making predictions. We have to ask questions that require more of a response than yes or no, or just by nodding. Okay, another, another suggestion is we have ask the what questions, and this will stimulate answers. Follow the child's answer with another questions. With this strategy, strategy will connect the reader to the characters and their situations or setting. So the learners will, will be able to connect her experiences to what is being read. In addition to being just for fun, read aloud materials will become your common text, setting the stage for differentiation. Use them to build background and knowledge and to show students how you apply strategies. You can also use them to introduce issues and invite students to respond to these issues in their journals. So, so that uh, we will encourage uh, expanded answers from the learners, we have to invite them to respond to these issues in their journals. Making your read aloud your teaching text will ensure 
that every student has an access to the information and skills they need to become a better reader. Okay, teach with diverse materials. We should be avoiding one text for the entire class. So use multiple texts and diverse reading levels for your units of studies. This will enable every student to gather information from books and magazines they can truly read. So in reading, we should not be using one text for the entire class. We should not be giving uh, one story for the whole class. But we have to give them diverse reading reading because they have different needs in and, and level of readings. So let us ensure that instruction is inclusive for diverse learners. With this, you can make classroom more welcoming for those with learning disabilities. Humans have a tendency to fall into patterns. So, so teachers are because uh, this is comfortable for us. But uh, if you are not careful for teachers, we teach things the same way every year. This is comfortable for us, but it will not work for all students, not easily adapted to the different needs of individuals and students. Okay, we should, we should organize for instruction so you meet all reading levels. So we need to sit down, draw up objectives for what the course is, is expected to convey to students. So uh, we have to be sure of, or so we have to be clear of what is our objectives for what the course is, is expected and to what we want to convey for the students. So we get, we get curriculum prepared to meet this objective. Okay. The third one is we have to prepare, prepare assessment to determine how effective we were in presenting information. Okay, these are the suggested suggested activities. We have description list. This is the easiest way to recognize manner of information. We have the problem solution. We have simple to complex and familiar to and familiar. Okay, whether you use a differentiated whole class instructional approach or have students work in small groups. You'll need to organize each unit of study around a genre, issue, or topic rather than teaching the whole group. We should also value independent practice reading. Okay, so I suggest that we set aside 15 to 30 minutes of class time at least three times a week for students to read book at their comfort levels and these levels carry from student to students. So when uh, there is a habit of reading, then we can inculcate in the mind and in the heart of the students the love for reading. Okay, so we should also show students how to construct meaning while reading students can become better readers only if they understand how to con construct meaning as they read by modeling the ways you think about text during your read alouds while you work with small reading groups and in your one-to-one -one instructional conferences with students you are offering students multiple opportunities for learning how to construct meaning so a reader who is able to construct meaning holds the ability to decipher and understand the meaning behind the words being read. So readers can, can also use text to connect their backgrounds, knowledge to the text by making connection. So they're able to connect the text to their lives, to their personal experiences. Readers use their prior knowledge and experiences to interpret what is being read. So if, if we know how to connect their lives to the text, then it is easy for them to comprehend. Okay. 
So we should also encourage discussions. Okay. To help students prepare for discussions, you can give a list of questions. You can even ask students to bring on their own questions while it is possible to learn by listening. Oral participation leads to greater gains in students, literacy and engagement. Discussion is especially important in differentiated reading classroom because it provides power, powerful way to build on every student's understanding and knowledge of facts. It also provides them with opportunities to clarify meaning and to build comprehension. So by asking the students to move beyond memorization and the fact to apply those facts to issues, problems through discussions, students deepen their understanding and recall in depth discussion among small groups and with the entire class can show students how their peers think and reason out. So to encourage these students, we should also engage them to ask questions and to expand their explanation and their experiences and to share with other learners. So we can build background knowledge and make the fact relevant to their own lives. So when they were a uh, they're able to contextualize that uh, reading, reading text to their own lives, then that will encourage discussion for the entire class. Then you have to write, to explore, think, learn, and improve comprehension. Okay, this can be done by encouraging students to write a journal and share the content of their journal to their classmates. So, so learners, it says, by Alverman and Phelps in 19, 1998 that learners can write only what they know and understand. If they haven't observed a lesson, they will have a little to write and they have a little to share. So it's crucial for teachers to know that everyone in the class does not absorb, does absorb the lesson and, uh, uh, and writing it down. Reading students' journals can provide insights into whether students can think inferentially and analyze chunks of the text. So that is why writing journals for the students is very important. This insight support planning, intervention for individuals, peers, small groups, at, and, and the entire class. So we should also use ongoing assessment to support each student. Okay, study the assessment in students complete for a unit to discover their successes and their areas. So why why we why do we need assessment? Because we we need to see whether that student complete for a unit and to discover their successes and their weaknesses. And by there we can give. Uh, activities so that to strengthen the learning process okay so by doing this we should plan your units carefully okay so when we have unit of study this enables you to understand what you want students to learn so if the objective is clear we will know where we are going and how we will do it. It will also ensure that you have gathered reading materials that meet the needs of each student as well as appropriate text for your read alouds activity. So you also need to assess, no? You also need to plan what is to be given to the students and that should be according to their needs. Okay, so we have different examples of differentiated instructions okay what are the different examples no these are only suggested uh examples of differentiated instruction okay we have a personalized course packet with individualized remediation or enrichment materials so we have to plan a course packet that is fitted to each student. So we have an adaptive, adaptive assessment 
that gets easier or harder depending on how a student is performing. So uh, when we have assessment, we should know how one student is performing so we can give what kind of activities uh, he or he should do. Okay. We have one-on-one -on -one coaching with students designed around his specific challenges. So the activity should be designed according to the weakness and strength of the students. Okay. Then you can have students group into small groups which are designed around their strengths and weaknesses so that they can tutor each other. So this is about peer teaching. They can uh, help each other because they have that strength and weaknesses. And they can be interactive with all the members in the group. So what uh, one member can do or can share to the group and that will uh, give her that self-esteem needed by the learners. Okay, so uh, because we have different kinds of students, we should be giving varying set, uh, sets of reading comprehension questions to answer for a given book. So this depends on the level of the students. Okay, what are the ways on how to use differentiated instruction in, in your classroom? Okay, we have curriculum mapping. Okay, so this is uh, these are the different ways and strategies and how to do uh, differentiated instruction. Number one is we have curriculum mapping. When we say curriculum mapping, this is a process of indexing or diag uh, diagramming a curriculum to identify and address academic gaps for a purpose of improving effectiveness of curriculum. So we have the inquiry base so by the use of questions and then uh, the students will explore on that concept. We have power standards and enduring understanding. We have the project-based learning student. Students gain knowledge and skills by working for an extended period of time to investigate, to respond to complex problems. And then uh, classroom layout and design is very important because some students are comfortable with one, uh, one specific layout and design of the classroom. So they have their choice what kind of learning environment they want to learn. Okay. Then we have learning model integration. When we say learning model uh, integration, we have this emphasizes understanding the nature of learning, resources, and knowledge needs within student experiences. Then we have sentence and discussion STEM. So with the sentence and discussion stem, this will uh, initiate the discussion of the learners. Then we have card learning targets, tiered learning targets. Okay, then we have learning through play. This describes how a child can learn to make sense of the world around them. For example, it gives them the place and time for learning that cannot be achieved through completing a worksheet. For example, we have a playing restaurant, child ride and draw, and draw menus, set prices, take orders, and make, and make checks. Play provides rich learning opportunities and childhood and this will develop self-esteem for the students then we have meaningful student voice and choice so students are given you know, the learners are given their voice and choices they're given or, or they're given ways on how to uh, give their insights and share their insights 
Okay, the learning badges. The learning badges in this is on uh we give some um rewards for the students if they have done good things. Now this is about uh giving uh rewards when they learn something, but we should not focus on uh uh more on intrinsic no rewards. Then we have the choice boards. So we will give them choices because I believe that there are students that they have their own choices. They have their own wants and they, they want uh, how they want to learn and where they want to learn what kind of, their, of environment they want for learning. Okay, relationship building and team building. So we create activities wherein we enforce team building that will ensure or that will enhance camaraderie, camaraderie among students. Then we have the self-directed learning, the Bloom's Twist. So we have the mock trial, the hot seat role play, student data inventories, the mastery learning, goal setting and learning contracts okay we also have the game based learning so uh we introduce concepts with the use of games and all the students will enjoy as well as they learn okay we have the problem based learning or place based education with the use of rubrics and learning menus Okay, with the use of cubes and jigsaws, these are more on games. With the use of graphic organizers, okay. learning through workstations, concept attainment, flip classrooms, mentoring. Okay, you can have a peer mentoring. Okay, then we have the learning feedback. Okay, we have the, the class rules, what is our house rules in the class, and then we have to, also we can use identity charts. Okay. okay, again, from the Philippines, this is Francia Tilabandero, thank you and good evening. Okay, so thank you so much, uh, Mom Francia Lavandello from the Philippines. We are very thankful for your uh, very nice presentation and for giving us your valuable time. So this session, you, this session has been a great opportunity for our audience, especially to all educators around the globe to learn how to teach guided with the principles of differentiated instruction to address the learner's needs. And with a lot of things discussed tonight, let me share to you some of the insights that I got from the discussion of our speaker for tonight. Okay, so let me share to you. Number one, we are dealing with diverse learners with a different IQ levels, beliefs and cultures, different weaknesses and strengths, different talents, and different learning styles. It means students learn at different pace, different strategies, different approach, and different teaching styles. Okay, another one, there is no fit to all teaching strategies. So we need to modify our instruction to cater different learning needs of our students. Next, teachers should continuously assess students' strengths and weaknesses to employ activities that fit to their personality. Okay? Another one, instruction must be tailored based on the needs of the learners. Next, learners must be given freedom to choose what and how to learn, so teachers must be flexible in giving them different learning activities. 
Okay, next, educators must be creative, especially on their instruction delivery, to address the learning needs of the students. And, of course, the most important one, before we employ any approach strategy, we have to know what we do that. Okay? So, dear participants, you might have different takeaways from what I have, but there is one thing I am sure of that we have in common, and that is we both learn tonight. Okay? Thank you, Okay, so we have our uh, next speaker. But before we proceed to our next uh, speaker, I am inviting again our uh, participants to please share and comment your friends in our comment box so that they can be able to access this uh, free international webinar. It will uh, serve as your support to our organization. And of course, we are also helping them to grow professionally and to learn something from our speakers for tonight. Okay. So let us now proceed to our second speaker. Uh, without a long introduction, our speaker is a master teacher one and have graduated at the doctor in education. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Arnold Alvaro from the Philippines. Hello, sir. Good evening. Hello, sir. Good evening, everyone. So, so I will share my presentation. Okay. <clears throat> so, before anything else, uh, I, I am, again, I'm Dr. Arnold Alvaro from the Philippines. So, so this is uh, my many, many thanks here in IGP. Need, I, if I'm not mistaken, that is, I think, fifth time here in IGP. So I will start now my presentation. Can you see it now, sir? Is it okay, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So... My lesson, my topic for tonight is about the multiple modalities. So what is multiple modalities? So when we say modalities, this is already uh, a word that is uh, famous to us since what we call, when, since we have the COVID-19 pandemic. So now let's try to find out what is multiple modalities. So multiple modalities is an instructional practice used to improve student engagement. So it involves providing diverse presentations and experiences of the content so that students use different senses and different skills during a single lesson. So the teacher will now use their pra the instructional practice in, in order for them to engage learners so often multiple modalities address different learning styles so we have different learning styles we have the auditory we have the visual we have the kinesthetic so teachers using multiple modalities may use again visuals like books uh, like television so we can also use the music we can also use objects experiences collaborative work we have the poetry writing or other modes to teach content so again that is multiple modalities so that is very common to us multiple modalities is an instructional practice used to improve student engagement again we have we are we are aiming to engage our learners in our lessons even even if we have the homeschooling or like um, tv broadcasting radio broadcasting we have online classes we have the modular uh, modular digital and modular printed so we have we have to engage our learners so it also involves providing diverse presentations and experiences of the content so that the students use different senses and different skills during a single lesson so 
those students will now use their senses in order for, again, to engage learners. So learning modalities in the new normal. So we have the face-to-face, -face, we have the blended learning. So under the face-to-face, -face, so it, it would be subjected to physical distancing. So now in the Philippines and other parts of the world are experiencing some face-to-face -face classes. Actually, Philippines is now the, the what do you call this? The, they are now just implementing this on November 15th. So that is the face-to-face. -face. So this is very crucial in part of those provinces that are have, having uh, high COVID-19 cases. Next, we have the blended learning. So this is a combination of the face-to-face -face and online distance learning, mod modular distance learning, and TV radio broad based instruction. So we also have the face-to-face -face and modular distance learning, face-to-face -face and online distance learning. So we have face-to-face -face and TV radio-based instruction. So we have the distance learning. So as we go back from the first, the, the, uh, the previous slide, we have this face-to-face this -face and blended learning is uh, happens during the ECQ, M6, M -E -C -Q. So if we have this um, ECQ or the high risk or the level level 3, so we, we will use the distance learning. So distance learning is um, we have the online distance learning, we have the modular distance learning, we have the digital, we have the printed and then we have the tv radio based instruction wherein we have the, we have the tv and radio broadcasters nowadays and then we have the homeschool so it was facilitated by qualified parents guardians or tutors who have undergone relevant training and subject to regulation so that's why we have the orientation with the parents before the start of the classes and then afterwards every quarter we are going to find out what are those uh, challenges and experiences of the parents during the homeschooling. So we have the learning delivery modalities. So under the learning continu continuity plan of that and uh, other educational institution in the Philippines and around the world. So we have the blended learning. It is al allows a combination of face-to-face -face again, online and modular learning delivery. And we have the distance learning wherein it is viable for independent learners in, and learners supported by periodic supervision of parents and learners. So we have, it, it, it can be delivered through online platforms. We have the educational programs with uh, TV and radio. So there, there is a communication between the, uh, the educational institutions and the, what do you call this, uh, cable, cable owners and then we have the printed modules again we have the printed and digital modules so another one is the homeschooling so so the the parents yes they they are the one who will educate according to their personal faith philosophy and values so learning schedules may adjust to fit family schedules and circumstances so that's why we have what we call the weekly home learning plan Next, we have the apprenticeship. So provide senior high school learners with opportunities for actual immersion in workplace situations under the supervision of a certified practitioner. So that's why we have different um, different institutions. Like here in the Philippines, we have the TESDA and the uh, Commission in Higher Education with, um, again, with the help of the TESDA. So that, that's why we have the TBL, TBL specialization that require more on-site learning and application skills than academics. So TESDA now, uh, they are topping different colleges and universities. So we had the, again the face-to-face -face learning. It is the traditional learning environment where the students and the teachers are both physically present in the classroom. So now if we are implementing this, so we have the social distancing. 
we have the teaching styles. Actually, this teaching styles is my um, my topic in my master degree. So why teaching styles matters or matter? So teaching style can either poster or inhibit learning. So again, it could we can use this so that our students or uh, the learners can will have, will able to learn or will able to grasp our the information that we are given to them. So another one, so in contrast, an effective teaching style can help students engage with the subject matter and enjoy learning. So we have to, um, again, engage our students with our lesson in subject matter. And then they will enjoy and will we'll find it, uh, they will find it as, um, okay, they, they will apply what their skills and their knowledge. So and another, providing regular positive feedback to support students' beliefs that they can do well. So if we are studying their learning styles again, we can have feed feedback of their, their performances. So ensuring students' success by giving them tasks that were neither too easy nor too hard. If we know their the learning styles, then now we can give the tasks uh, that will that the learner can do so helping students discover meaning and value in the learning material so they now even if we are giving the modular and modular digital or printed they will value the learning material itself so making students feel that they are valued part of a learning community so no not just teaching so those students will learn so we have to engage our learners. Lastly, we have working with the students' strengths and interests. Again, because, because if we are we are going to know what are their learning styles, then we can change or we can we, we can be flexible to teach what is right for them. So Teaching styles is an effective teaching, uh, teaching wherein we can influence academic performance. So again, those teaching styles can influence academic performance because we can engage learners and then the, the, the learners will easily grasp the, the knowledge and the knowledge and information that we are giving them. So we have the different teaching styles, we have the We have the different teaching styles. We have the teacher centered. So the teacher is positioned as the expert. So they are the authority figure, and the students are the novices. So students are seen as empty vessels who receive knowledge imparted by their teachers. So the teacher will usually use methods such as lectures and direct instruction. So some examples of teacher centered approaches include, include formal authority. So the teacher provides the content and the student receives it. So teachers using this style can usually expect much student participation. So because the teacher will just uh, talk and talk. So the, the students will just listen. Another one, so demonstration model. So the teacher, again, from the, from it, from the word itself, demonstrate. So the teacher will demonstrate and then guide students to develop and apply those skills. So the teacher-centered approach also is positive, including the ability to deliver a lot of information in a short time because the teacher can budget their time, okay? So using their time management, so they can control the content being delivered. So many students can easily access student performances. So evidence shows it is the most effective method for novice learners. So it is also a downside if not delivered properly. So it tends to promote passive learning and doesn't encourage critical thinking because only the teacher will think because the learners, again, will just listen. Another one is student-centered. So from the word itself, it 
was centered with the students were in the student although the teachers are still the authority i think we were six students and teachers now play a more equal role in learning so the, no not just the teacher just talk now the learner will talk and they will demonstrate and then apply their knowledge so the teacher will just be a coach so they will encourage learners to to participate in the group projects or for follows our participation. So we have teaching styles like facilitators so that teachers using this style often focus on activity. So now teachers are not, not, uh, not just teaching, they just facilitate in the lesson problem. Now next we have delegator. So delegate from the word again, delegate. So they will delegate those learners what to do what are their responsibility so they will allow those students to create and manage their own learning projects and consult with them as needed so the student center also is benefited in, in terms of they will include encouraging students to take ownership of knowledge and fostering critical thinking why, why why do we see that they will have the ownership of knowledge because they will um they will apply again they will apply their knowledge because they already um what do you they already understand our lesson. so it also has drawbacks so same as the teacher center so as such as being more difficult to implement with large number of students because in example here in the philippines we have 40 to 50 students so it's, it's it is very difficult for teachers to delegate and give the responsibilities for the students so students who are more passive or less motivated may also struggle with this stuff. so some some are some will excel and some will next we have the high-tech approach so those teachers now are using the high-tech approach wherein they use different uh, screens like projector we have the television in their classroom so many teachers are adopting a high-tech teaching style using tools like again laptop tablets and setting homework requiring internet search so like giving giving uh projects to students in messenger or giving them assignments or homeworks in the Google Classroom. So numerous educational apps and software programs are available and students can even get help at home from online tutors. So the use of technology for teaching has many advantages. It is often more engaging for students, especially when combined with the gaming technology. So for students with disability, technology can make learning more accessible. So again, using technology, they will um, they will access more knowledge and information. So low tech approach. So despite these changes, so some teachers are preparing low tech teaching approach. This also has advantages. For example, some research has shown that low tech classrooms may be better for learning. Why? So the students who had hand write notes, for example, are better recall than those who type them. So even if uh, during my high school time, during those, uh, during maybe our viewers now, they are experienced, they already experienced this. Then during our time, we are, we have to write our notes in order to learn. So we don't have the books. Now it's already, we already have books online like ebooks. Uh, it's already in the Google, so we, we can just search the net and then uh, search for the word that we we want to find out. So furthermore, students will use the tools like spell check and autocorrect. So from a younger age, maybe weaker in spelling and writing skills. That is, again, the low-tech approach. So the hybrid or blended teaching style. So in the contemporary classroom, it is likely that teachers will encounter students from diverse backgrounds with a range of learning materials. 
So good teachers will often use what's known as differentiated instruction, where the needs of all students are kept in mind while teachers are developing learning plans. So as teachers are using um, lesson plans, and now we have also those, uh, the students now are uh, grasping information from us using different styles or instruction. So now the teachers are, again, um, uh, if, for example, if I teach this kind of style in one class, it is not, um, we, I can change it in another session. So that is definition of instruction. So it's not that, um, it is not the, um, those again, those instruction cannot be used to another section. That's why you can change it and you should be flexible for the instruction. So we have the learning styles. We have the auditory. So from the word audio. So auditory learners absorb information best by listening. So they are they want to listen to gain knowledge and information. Next, we have the visuals. So those are learners who want to watch, who want to read books. So visual learners take information through seeing it again. So they will respond to practical demonstrations and videos. So they absorb information better from looking at illustrations and presentation than participating in discussions. So kinesthetic. So we have kinesthetic learners do best when they can perform tasks, they will learn best from activities such as we have the field trips, we have practical training, hands-on training. So in class, they may need regular breaks and benefit from opportunities to move around. They, so most of the students are just, they are enjoying if they are moving. So, but according to the studies, um, according to the result also of my study, most of the students are visual learners. They gain more knowledge using um, visual, visual learning. So teachers would get to know the learning styles of their students can tailor their teaching approach accordingly. So where there's a mismatch between the learning styles of the students and the approach of the teacher, this can lead to student frustration, boredom, and discourage, discouragement. Again, if um, if the students, if you use, again, different teaching styles to the learning style of the student, if, they, if you will not much again there is a mismatch so the, this will lead again to boredom and discouragement so the teach, the students will not learn from your lesson because you are using different style so that is what we call the mismatch so great teachers work around this issue by using what's called a diversified approach and in this approach teachers are various teaching styles so depending on the content students are learning in the diversity of the student needs. For example, a teacher might combine a lecture with a group task and an internet-based homework assignment. So evidence-based direct instruction techniques. So starting a lesson by reviewing previous learning to strengthen what students have already learned and help transfer it into long-term memory. So thereby freeing up working memory for new information. Again, we have to start our lesson by pre -review, reviewing, again, the previous learning so that uh, we can test if they are learning in our lessons. So presenting new material in small steps with opportunities for practice between each step. So that's why this, this are, these steps are used in lesson planning. So again, this helps to reduce the burden on working memory and avoid overwhelming students' thinking processes. So using models and work examples. So if the students are seeing, or again, that is visual, if they are seeing those models and then examples, they can focus and we, they have, um, it again, it reduces the stain or working memory. So guiding student practice. Supervised rehearsals combined with feedback helps ensure new material makes a successful transition to long-term memory. 
again, if the, the student will uh, apply their knowledge again, and then you are guiding them to do that uh, skills and competencies, therefore, they will have the long-term memory. Checking for understanding of new materials to reduce the risk of errors and misconception, the post and poster processing or of, of new material into long-term memory. So again, checking their understanding by using different assessment tools. So providing scaffolding for the difficult tasks like teaching support when students are learning complex material is a form of guided practice. So we can add different activities again so to develop their mastery. So requiring and monitoring independent student practice. That's why we can give uh, again, additional activities and assignments. So the significant practice is needed for knowledge and skills to become fluid and automatic. So uh, uh, using those additional activities now, again, they can they can have uh, they can practice and then they will uh, again they will. Uh, Again, they, they will apply again their knowledge. So effective teaching strategies for the classroom. So the classroom is a dynamic environment bringing together students from different backgrounds with various abilities and personalities. So being an effective teacher therefore requires the implementation of creative and innovative teaching strategies in order to meet student individual needs. So whether you've been teaching two months or 20 years, it can be difficult to know which teaching strategies will work best for your students. As a teacher, there is no one size fits all. That's why we can, we should be flexible to use different instructions for our learners. So that's why we need to know if they are visual learners, auditory learners, and kinesthetic learners. So we have the visualization. So bring dull academic concepts to life with visual and practical learning experiences. So that is visualization. They can see those. Um, do, they can see some models. Therefore, they can visualize. That is, they can visualize. They can visualize the your lessons. So examples are we have the whiteboards, audio clips, and videos. So local. A local field trips and so on and so forth. So cooperative learning, we have to encourage students of mixed abilities to work together by promoting small group or whole class activities. So that is cooperative learning. So they will co cooperate to their different uh, group members so that they can work together and they can share their knowledge and experiences to the, to the other students. So through verbally expressing their ideas and responding to other students, they will develop self-confidence, self-esteem, as well as enhance their communication and critical thinking skills are vital to our life. So we have solving mathematical puzzles, conducting scientific experiments, and acting out short drama sketches are just a few examples of cooperative learning. So theater is one of the uh, one of these examples. So we have inquiry-based instruction, supposed to provoking question which inspires their students to think for themselves and become more independent learners. So encouraging students to ask questions and investigate their own ideas helps improve their problem-solving skills, as well as gain a deeper understanding of academic concepts, both of which are important life skills. Again, we have to encourage learners to ask questions. We have to inquire. What if we have to uh, ask them? if they are learning in our lessons. So inquiries can be science or math based such as why does my shadow change size or is the sum of two odd numbers always an even number? So we have, we have they, they will think critically. We have differentiation. So differentiate your teaching by allocating tasks based on students' abilities. Again, that is we have to know again their learning style. So assigning classroom activities to students' unique learning needs. So if they are, do, if we are, they need more activities, you have to give them. And then if it is enough, then that's all. So this can involve handling out worksheets that vary in complexity to different groups of students. So moreover, using an educational tool such as Quizalize can save your hours of time. So do we have different applications? 
like we have um, Slido, we have um, Quiz It, and so on and so forth. So technology in the classroom. So incorporating technology in your teaching is a great way to actively engage your students, especially in a digital age during this 21st century. So interactive whiteboards or mobile devices can be used. We have different applications that they can use us in their classroom. So mobile devices such as iPads, we have the tablets, we have laptops. We, they can also use pot, uh, they can use it to take photos and videos or simply uh, behavior management technique. Another one is behavior management. So implementing an effective behavior management strategy is crucial to gain your students' respect and ensure students have an equal chance of reaching their full potential. So noisy, disruptive classrooms do not do incur, do no encourage a productive learning environment. Therefore, developing an atmosphere of mutual respect to a combination of discipline and reward can be beneficial for both you and your students. So um, teachers will not just teach. They, they should encourage the learner to, to apply their knowledge in the real world. So examples include we have the Planning interactive reward charts for younger students, give them um, certificates, you can give them ribbons or medals, wherein they have to move or down based on their behavior. So we have the golden time can also work for students of all ages with the choice of bars activities such as games or no homework and reward for their hard work. So sometimes uh, instructors and teachers were not we're giving um Again, reward such as no examination if you have attained the objectives of the teachers and that's in those lessons. So next, we have the professional development. So we need this professional development as teachers to, again, to know the different advance, advancement. So so some, some, some of our teachers are... Uh, studying or attending seminars so that they will again they will uh, they will have more information and advancement in teaching and learning so with educational policies constantly changing it is extremely useful to attend events like seminars and workshops wherein it is a great excuse to get out of the classroom and work alongside other teachers just like it. so so most teachers are using different styles and then if you want to know those styles that are can be used to your students therefore that is effective so sessions can include learning uh, about new educational technologies like online safety training advice on how to use your teaching assistance and much more so being an effective teacher is a challenge because every student is unique so not all your uh, style is can be fit to the, those students. So again, however, by using a combination of teaching strategies, you can address the students' varying learning styles and academic capabilities, as well as make your classroom a dynamic and motivational environment for the teacher. So I use the re references of Sophia all different teaching styles to different students and the crystallized blog, we have the seven effective teaching strategies for classroom. So, so that's all for for tonight. So that that ends my presentation. Okay. So once again, our second speaker for tonight, we have Sir Arnold Alvaro from the Philippines. So once again, sir. Thank you so much uh, for sharing us your expertise in uh, teaching using different modalities, which are very relevant to our uh, present education setting. Uh, it has been a challenge to most educators on how to deliver instructions considering the present scenario and, of course, to ensure that uh, students are really acquiring the lifelong learning skills okay so to our dear participants uh we have our second speaker for tonight let us give him 
of virtual applause. Okay, so let me share to you some of the insights that uh, I have gained through the discussion of uh, Sir Arnold. Okay, number one, teaching styles matter. Okay, number two, effective teaching style can help students engage with the subject or whatever activity that we are giving or we are doing or we are employing in our class. Okay, number three, helping students, teaching styles help students discover meaning and value of learning, which is very important, especially to our uh, new generations nowadays. Okay, so uh, let me just enumerate uh, some of the uh, teaching approaches that uh, Sir Arnold discussed to us tonight. Okay, uh, we have the teacher-centered approach, the student-centered approach. In, uh, in your own assessment, what type of teacher are you or what kind of approach do you employ in your uh, in teaching uh, process? Are you employing teacher-centered approach or a student-centered approach? Okay. If you serve as a coach, a facilitator, or as a delegator, then you are what you're doing is a student-centered approach. Okay. Another is the low-tech approach, the hybrid, the hybrid or blended teaching approach, the diversified approach, the cooperative learning. Okay. So those are the approaches that uh, I think. Uh, completely discussed and comprehensively discussed by uh, Sir Arnold. Okay, another insight is that teachers must employ different teaching approaches. All we have to do is to choose the, uh, what approach or teaching style fit to the type of learners we have. And I have realized that the best teaching style is the one that caters all the needs of our learners inside the classroom. So it is very important that we should know the learning styles of our students. We should know the level of our students before we employ any of these approaches. Okay, so once again, Sir Arnold Alvaro from the Philippines, thank you so much for your uh, pearls of wisdom in uh, this topic. Thank you so much. Okay, so... Uh, please stay with us because after the quiz competition, we will still have the, the question and answer portion where our participants can be able to uh, directly ask you. Okay, so let us now proceed to the quiz competition. So we are encouraging everyone to participate and have a chance to have a certificate for winning in the quiz. We will start our quiz competition after this video. And again, we are encouraging our dear participants to uh, uh, join our quiz competition. Okay, the link of the quiz is posted on the comment section and you may use the code to join. The code is, okay, you can see on the screen, the code is all cops IGP quiz. Okay, how to access the quiz? The link is uh, posted on the comment section or you can go directly on the website www.slido.com. Okay, so you can join directly even without downloading the Slido app or even without an account in the Slido. But for convenience, it is better that you download the Slido app so that you can easily access future quiz competition of IGP. 
Again, you can access IGP quiz by clicking the link in the comment section. If you are using the uh, Facebook uh, platform, you can just uh, look the link on the comment section. If you are using the uh, YouTube or if you are watching using the YouTube application, you can, al uh, you can also go to the comment section and then click the link. Okay, you can use the code, all caps, IGP, quiz. Okay, for the meantime, we have 127 participants in our quiz competition, registered participants on the quiz competition. Okay, some of the names are posted or flashed on the screen. Okay. Again, we are encouraging all our participants to join the quiz competition because IGP will choose 10, top 10 of the participants who will win in this competition and will receive an e-certificate. Okay, so we now have 149, 150 participants. And it is still increasing. Again, to our dear participants, IGP will select the top 10 winners for this quiz competition. Okay, differentiated instruction is the tailoring of educational experience to meet individual learner needs. Is it true or false? Okay, 98 versus 2 percent. And 98 percent of our dear participants got the correct answer. Let's see who got on the top five. Okay, you can see on the screen. Next, differentiating instruction means that you observe and understand the differences and similarities among students and use this information to plan instruction. True or false? Let's see what is the correct answer. 99 versus 1 percent. Okay, 99 percent of the participants got the correct answer. Okay, let's see who is or who are on the top five will be flashed on the screen. Okay, you can see. Let us proceed to the next item, number three. Teachers continually assess to identify students' strengths and areas of need so they can meet students where they are and help them move forward. Ongoing formative assessment, recognition of diverse learners. Sixty-eight versus thirty-two percent. Let's see. Okay, sixty-eight percent of our participants got the correct answer. Okay, 
Students collaborate in pairs. Group work, problem solving. Okay, 90 versus 10. What do you think is the correct answer? Okay, it's a group work. 90% of the participants got the correct answer. This encourages all students to explore big ideas and expand their, understand their understanding of key concepts. Group work, problem solving. What do you think? Sixteen percent versus eighty-four percent. Okay, the correct answer is problem solving, and eighty-four percent of our participants got the correct answer. Let's see who is or who are on the top five who got the correct answer in item number five. Okay, you can see there. Let's proceed to the next. Blended learning allows for a combination of face-to-face -face online and modular learning de delivery. True or false? Okay, 97% of our participants got the correct answer. An effective teaching style can help students engage with the subject matter and enjoy learning. True or false? Okay, 100% true according to our dear participants. Let's see. Okay, and they all got the correct answer. Okay. Let's have the teacher is positioned as the expert authority figure and the students as the novices. Teacher-centered, student-centered. Eighty-seven percent versus thirteen percent. Okay, eighty-seven percent of our participants got the correct answer. Okay. Teachers are still authority figures. However, students and teachers play a more equal role in learning. Student-centered or teacher-centered? Okay, the correct answer is student-centered. Using tools like laptops, tablets in the classroom and setting homework, acquiring internet research. Low-tech, high-tech. Okay, so 98% of our participants got the correct answer in item number 10. 
Okay, so let's see who are on the top 10 of this quiz competition. Okay, so the top five answering the question number 10. Okay, congratulations to our quiz competition winners top 10. Okay, we have now the updated list of the top 10 winners on the top one spot. We have Shirley Devera Fernandez. Number two, Dennis Ginto Serso. Number three, Gemaline V. Rivera. Number four, Maria Angelica Sidanza Gonzaga. Number five, Jeffrey A. Salem. Number six, J.B. Lorraine O. Aguana. Number seven, Evelyn P. Waperi. Number eight, Carlo Malabanan. Number nine, I can see. Number nine, we have May Dagpin Olavides. Number 10, we have Ronalyn G. Opeda. Okay, congratulations and uh, thank you for participating in our quiz competition. And for the non winners, we just keep joining. Because there's a lot of webinar, uh, web, webinar series in the upcoming days. So just keep joining to our IGP quiz competition. Okay? So let us now proceed to our uh, next part of this session, which is all about the question and answer portion of our session. Okay? So... Okay, welcome back to our program. Good evening once again, Sir Arnold and uh, Mom uh, Francia from the Philippines, our speakers for tonight. Okay, so let's have the first question from uh, Sir Peruz Akbarov to Miss Francia Labande Labandelo talking about instruction is different from executing it during the, the class. How to ensure your instruction is short and sweet? Any personal tips? Mom Francia? Okay. Uh, good evening, Mr. Peros Al Akbarov. So, your question is about talking about instruction is different from executing it during the class. How to ensure your instruction is short and sweet? Any personal tips? Okay, uh, this is based on my experience. No, I've been teaching for uh, about 26 years before I became a school head. And uh, in my classes, I try to give activities which suits their uh, interest. For example, if given a text, uh, we have some performance tasks. I will not require them to write. The whole class will not require a written reaction, but they can draw, they can portray in in uh, in a drama, in commercials. No, so they will try to choose how to give their reaction in, in a certain text. 
with their talents, no? with their uh, strengths and values. For example, we have one student can sing and he will be giving the reaction through, through, uh, by, through a song. If a student can dance, he can give his, his reaction by dancing. So those performance tasks are given uh, based on their interest. So it's their choice on how to express themselves. I hope I answered your question. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Mom Francia, for that uh, wonderful answer. Okay, let's proceed to the next question. Okay, a question from Manolita Ramas Oligo to Miss Francia. How do teachers prepare and implement and use student interest to facilitate differentiated instruction? Okay, hello, Mom. Francia, I think you are muted. So, okay, uh, okay. good evening, Miss Manalita Ramos Oligo. So, in my point of view, to successfully deliver a differentiated instruction, one must plan carefully. One must know their learners. Um, and, and with that, you can uh, move forward in planning your instruction. So to prepare and implement is uh, a very hard task. But if you know your students, their strength and their interest, I think that you can do it well. No? So, before you can plan and before you can implement, you must know the strengths and uh, and weaknesses of your learners. You, you Also, you need to know the multiple intelligences of your learners. Okay. I hope I so answered the question. Thank you so much, uh, Mom friends. Okay, another question is uh, still from Sir Ferruz Akbarov to Dr. Arnold Alvaro. Is it better to adopt a uniform teaching method for public schools and institutions across the board or let them decide their own way? What happens if every public school has its own way of teaching methods and materials? Sir? Again, so teaching, teaching methods bar is so it again, it will, uh, it can up uh, those. Uh, those methods can apply to if we know the teach, uh, learning styles of the students. And like uh, Mom Francia said, so we have to know first our students to plan our activities. So we can use these methods if we know their learning styles. So those public schools can have, again, uh, no methods can fit all. So again we have to plan we have to think we have to know we have to understand our learners first before before we can plan or you we can use those methods so again um those public school again can decide their own way it is if it fits to their students again it, what happened if every public school has its own way of teaching methods and material so again we can see that those public schools again it's it's their prerogative what methods can be used because those we have different kinds of learners we have different uh, multiple intelligence of the learners that is we can again uh, from the first uh from like what mom francia said we we should know our learners so that we can plan ahead. That's all. Thank you so much, sir, for that answer. Let us proceed to the next uh, question. And the question is coming from Kevin Tanduran. What is the most effective and efficient tool in order to correctly and appropriately profile the learning style and learning preference of learners to give them the most germane learning instructions okay uh, so i think my, it is okay yes, that's sir? my that my that's my topic so uh in my 
in my masteral degree. So this is my topic in my thesis. So I have uh, I have a tool wherein it can test what what teaching a uh, learning style does those students have. So there are questions about auditory, there are questions about visual, and there are questions about kinesthetic. So if if you want to know the Sir Kevin Taduran, you can message me and maybe I can send send those uh questionnaire for you. So any of you any of the viewers I, I can share it to you. Okay. Thank you so much in advance, sir. <laughs> okay, so I think the question has uh, been addressed already and uh, a follow-up details will be given by sir arnold to kevin taduran just message uh, sir uh, arnold for a follow-up okay another question is from jane bayaton the question is what is the important tool to assess the students okay so Anybody who go first? Mom Francia, can we what what can you say about this question? Good evening, Miss Jane Bayaton. So uh for me, your question is on what is the important tool to assess the students. Okay. <clears throat> for me, one um important tool to assess the students is through uh, observation. Another one is to uh we're giving them some di diagnostic tests. We're giving them some uh, uh, tests, pen and paper tests, or or that is one that is only one tool. But as a teacher, your observation, your keen observation, is one important tool to assess your students. And uh, this is not easy. No, it takes time. So you have to take your, um, you need to have the journal. You have to, to put into writing what are the things you have observed? What are the things that student, students have done? So one uh, important uh, way is to make a profiling of students. Okay. So, so that you can uh, give what kind of uh, instruction no? for one specific student is that uh, you have given him a very honest profiling of that student. Okay, thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, sir, can you add something? So in addition, again, for you have from Ma'am Francia. So thank you, Ma'am Jane Bayaton, for your question. So uh, tools to assess the students. First, again, observation. We have to observe your students. You have to know their background. You have to to test their knowledge through diagnostic tests, uh, pre-test, and after your lesson, you have to to give post-test or assessments. And sometimes those the assessment tools like uh, uh, performance tests based on uh, the rubrics. So we, that's the tool that we can use to assess the students. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Let's proceed to the next question. The question is coming from Romel John Aquino. To Sir Arnold, it is good to have the strategy. No examination for learners who got perfect on our quiz today. As a motivation and as a behavior management technique to the class. Or is it a good strategy, uh, Sir Arnold? Based on my experiences, so uh, if uh, if we encourage our learners, if we motivate our learners to excel during our during the lesson proper, so they will tend to. Uh, we, I think I have to perfect the examining this quiz so that. I, I could be uh, exempted in the examination. So 
that is the the one way that we can motivate them so that they can they must uh they must listen they must participate in our lesson proper that's all sir if okay you can add mom francia if you want mom francia you want to add something? Caramel. so if i may add i want to see it as a glass half full and half empty okay so when we say no examination for learners who got perfect on our quiz today if we want to see the glass half full then um uh, they will see that as a motivation to excel but then there are students who see that uh, that statement as half empty, then uh, they will not be motivated. In my case, when I was a student, no, uh, if I got grades in one class, I tried to excel more. And if I failed, Okay, so I think uh, Mom Francia has a problem with the internet connection. Okay, so let us proceed to uh, hello. The next. Okay, hello, Mom. Hello. <laughs> I thought it's my technical error. Yeah, there. I think there is a technical error in your internet connection. Okay, ah, okay. so let's proceed to the next uh, question. Uh, the question is from Manolita Ramas Oligo to Dr. Arnold. What should teachers need to to about okay? What should teachers need about their students to accommodate different learning styles in the classroom? Sir Arnold. Okay, thank you, Mama Manolita Ramas Oligo, for the question. So again, um the first thing that we must do again is to know our learners we have to test them if they are good in visual learning if they are good in auditory learning if they are good in kinesthetic learning so we can accommodate them again if we already know their learning styles and then those we have we must match with their learning styles in my case for example uh, I'm doing this lesson to the first section. I have those methods and strategies for that section, for the first section. And then to another section, I, ha I have to be flexible. I have to change my strategy or methods for that section because some of those students are uh, needs need more uh, activities or need more uh explanations so that's why we, we need to know our learners first before we plan those strategies okay so we really have to know our students okay another question from uh, sir eddie garcia advantage of differentiated instructions to slow learners okay for both speakers okay sir eddie garcia is asking for the advantage of differentiated instructions to slow learners mom okay so differentiated instruction is um uh, really an advantage because though we have the same objectives for example we set one objectives we will try to accomplish that objective by means of different ways you no know, in different ways so we cater to the level of the students. So for example, we have one text uh, for both the, the fast learner and the slow learner, but we have to employ different procedures or, or different techniques so that uh, uh, these two learners can adapt or can, can achieve the objectives that we have set. For example, one learner will um, uh, achieve the objective in 20 minutes or in 15 minutes but the slow learner students will achieve that 
for example, in, in two or three hours, but we have to focus on or we have to give more attention to that learners or we have to uh, uh, assist that students and uh, give more activities so that there will be uh, more emphasis on that object objective being should, should be met by that learner. So same objectives, but we have to tailor fit it according to the, the level of that students. Okay, okay, so sir, if I may you want to add something? Okay. Yes. So this is more this is a um, differentiated instruction is advantages to slow learners. Like my in my experience, so if I so I'm teaching mathematics, so when I discuss a lesson in front of the class, that is for the whole class. And after giving some example uh, some activities. I will go to the students that are with what we call slow learners. So I will guide them, tell them uh, step by step what to do next. Sometimes uh, if if they, they, they won't learn if we are teaching in, in front, but if we are there to guide them the step by step process, they, they will learn and then they will uh, appreciate it and they will participate in your lesson okay thank you so much sir for that question for that answer okay let's proceed to the next question okay the question is coming from Janeline Villar great evening Dr. Arnold what are the different ways for us to know our learners' learning styles. Thanks. Sir? Okay, good evening, Mom Jane and Billiard. So one of the way that I use, again, is that um, using, using the learning uh, student learning styles questionnaire. That is, you have... There are some questions that uh, if the students are tickling in the in the notebook, that is the student is uh, using kinesthetic learner. He he wants to move. If the student is uh, good in reading, or if you can see the students are reading, those students are visual learner. If the students are uh, um what do you call this the students are uh, always going out in the classroom they are kinesthetic learner they want to move again another one is if the students are uh having their audio uh earphone sorry earphone they are good in they are auditory learners so sometimes we have to we have we have to group those things so that we can know if those learners are in the auditory are, are auditory learners, visual learners, or kinesthetic learners. Some of those uh, we have to observe their actions. That's all, Mom Janeling Villa. Me so uh, that's all. Thank you so much, Sir Arnold. Another question is from Romel John Aquino. And this question is addressed to Sir Arnold. It is good. I think this was uh, answered already. Yeah, it's already answered. Yeah. Okay, so let's have another question from our participants. because this uh, question was already answered already by uh, mom francia and sir arnold a while ago okay next question the question is coming from val Ramelino, romelino patwal to madame francia labandello mom may i ask how can we apply a group work to our students in my area for some of the students family have no smartphones or any gadgets. Okay, sir. Sir Val Romelino 
patwal. Okay, good evening. So there are some uh even in our in our areas, there are some uh far flung schools. And um we're talking about the new normal, no? So this your question is on um the pandemic times, no. So in in our in our uh, division we have far flung schools no so your question is on how can you apply group work to our students you don't have any technologies you don't have any smartphones or any gadgets so teachers have hard time thinking how can cooperative learning be employed during this pandemic time. So, in our area, we are giving uh, we are we are giving radios, sharing smart, uh, phones, and we collaborate by means of a call, by means of uh, using two-way radio. So, I want to share that in our division or in my school, I have raised forty units of radio. And we give these radios to uh, to these students who are not um, you don't have the opportunity to have technologies. But then during these times, it's really hard to have this group work for our students. No, um, I think we can easily employ this uh, this strategy in a face to face, but teachers can adapt or teachers can think of ways on how can these stu students be indulged in the activities. So uh, be creative, be resourceful, because we have many students who don't have the opportunity or the privilege to, to have those uh, kind of gadgets. So let's uh, move out of our comfort zone and to produce and give this to our students. It may be hard, but we can. So I am a school head and uh, I try to have the initiative to ask my friends to donate, to give away those phones which they are not choosing. And I think uh, uh, it. we need to have that kind of um, value to share so cooperative learning is easy in a face-to-face -face classroom but hard during this pandemic times i can i add my uh, yes. sir yes hello sir sir you're muted uh, okay sir uh okay sir you you can add something uh i can uh, i'm i'm a um for example in our uh in my current school so Gordon Hills National High School we have what we call this uh showcase of talents so since our students don't some of our students don't have the smartphones they cannot take videos and record those uh, musical performances so some of uh the students near near those students I mean, no, near the performers they will take the videos and then afterwards the uh, the special program in the arts teachers um put it in one video and then they they play it in the facebook facebook page of our school and though that is an example of uh collaborative collaborative learning or group work that they do That's okay so we still give value to the collaborative efforts of our students okay so another question from corazon a quintana to miss francia how may a teacher implement differentiated instruction if parents are not so cooperative in this activity don't you think parents should also be a partner on this approach ma'am 
parents have that uh, uh, important role in educating their child, no? So, as a partner, parents should be our partner. But then, uh, it's a sad reality that sometimes parents are not cooperative. Parents are not visible. Parents are don't mind the activities in school. So, as a teacher, you try to uh, you can explain to the parents but then if because sometimes parents don't have that open mind no? how can you implement the differentiated instruction so um as the the lead role in education you try to have uh, strategies don't do not rely on the parents do not rely on their decisions that this children should uh, participate in cooperative learning so try to uh, uh, try to embrace or try to embrace these children who needs most of this instruction sometimes this children who needs the instruction has the parents who less cooperate huh? sometimes we have parents who don't care about their uh, children's education so you as a teacher have that big role and it's it's a big challenge when they see that their children are performing when they see that uh, you have a great impact on their children i think they will have that uh, that instinct to cooperate or to uh, to join in any activities this is hard but this is a challenge Okay, thank you so much, Mom Francia, for that wonderful answer. Okay, let's proceed to the next question. Uh, the question is coming from Carlo Ibanez to Mom Francia. How teaching a certain lesson can be better because the teacher uses differentiated instructions? Mom? Okay. Teaching one lesson is better using differentiated instruction. I believe in that uh, statement. Why? Because we should teach our children, our learners, in the context or in the context they are in, in the situation they are they are in. We have uh, var varied learners with different cultures, and uh, sometimes what is true to one student is not true to another student because we have different culture. So we try to teach them um, in the context or in the life they are living, in the experiences that they understand. For example, we don't talk about um, high-end technology, about um, high-end gadgets, about high-end brands with the students in the rural area. So try to see the context of that students and try to uh, try to, to to apply that differentiated instruction based on the context and the environment of the learner because she will not or he will not understand things which he or she did not experience okay thank you so much mom francia okay another let's have another question Okay, the question is coming from Jomir Soliman Nogid. How assessment of data of the learners become relevant and accurate in this online teaching? Okay, so I think this is addressed to both uh, speakers. So, sir, can you do the first? Okay. So, how assessment of data of the learners become relevant and accurate in this online learning? So, um we have to think of the best application that will suit our learners. For example of that is uh, the, the, the application that we use here in IGP, that is Slido, that is very recommendable to online teaching because we, we, we can, we can uh, identify those students who are, uh, we can say slow learners, or we can say uh, they are just guessing 
or they they will think past. That is, we can assess them by using those application or recommendable application. Okay, so thank you so much, Sir Arnold. And to our dear participants who uh, raised their questions and queries about the topic. Okay, so once again, thank you so much, uh, Ma'am Francia T. and Dr. Arnold Alvaro for answering the questions of our participants. And also thank you to all participants who actively participated in uh, giving their questions. And uh, we are also learning from every question that you address to our speakers because sometimes we are sharing the same questions in mind. Once again, to our dear speakers, uh, Ma'am Francia and Dr. Arnold, we are very grateful for sparing your time just to be with us tonight. We owe a lot of learnings that we have acquired tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you okay. very much. Yes, Ma'am. Okay, so thank you, uh, thank you, thank you, too, sir. So, to our dear learners, we saw that at this moment you feel or you have felt difficulties with using the website. We noticed all the things and working on it, which is not our problem, but still our technical team working on it. Thanks for your patience. For the certificate, please collect the certification link and certificate code at this moment and try it in your free time. We saw that it occurs when lots of user wants to join our website. This is a temporary problem with our hosting provider. So again, thanks for your patience and we are sorry for that. Okay, so let's have the code for today's session, for tonight's session, rather, that today's program name is Multiple Teaching Instruction and Modalities. The code is all caps IGP4546. Always remember that without the code, no one is eligible for any certificate. So all you have to do is to take the screenshot of this code or you can write it down in a piece of paper so that you can be able to download your e-certificate anytime you want using this code okay also be reminded that without an account on our website you can visit but you can't do anything functionally okay so it is recommendable or it is advisable to our dear participants to create an account to our website, okay? So with the code, click get your certificate. That's what you see in uh, our screen. Get your certificate and then your certificate code, you have to key in the IGP or all caps IGP4546 as the code for tonight's session. Okay, so let's proceed to the upcoming webinars. On November 8, 2021, we have the webinar series of Skilling Organizational Leadership and Managerial Skills, the role of SBM in School Improvement Plan. And we have our speaker from the Philippines. Okay. So the webinar series is composed of five parts and part one will be discussed on November 8th. That will be tomorrow. On November 9, 2021, the topic is all about educational action research and this will be discussed by a speaker from the Philippines. On November 10, 2021, Inquiry-based approach in the 21st century teaching. And it will be discussed by two speakers from the Philippines also.
On November 11, 2021, we have the topic about mathematics education thriving in the old and new normal. And this will be discussed by one speaker from the Philippines. On November 13, 2021, the topic is all about personality development and communication skills. And it will be discussed by Dr. Priyanka Gupta of India. On November 14, 2021, morning session, the topic is all about identify learners' needs with art of teaching. And this will be discussed by a speaker from Sri Lanka, Hajara Sadab. On November 14, 2021, evening session, the topic is all about ethics and principles of communication. And it will be discussed by a speaker from the Philippines, Genesis G. Ginelza. Another webinar session on November 15, 2021. It is a webinar series on upskilling organizational leadership and managerial skills, part two, which is all about collaboration, extension, and linkages. And it will be discussed by a speaker from the Philippines, Sir Joseph Roland M. Nasal. On November 16, 2021, expanding your virtual classroom with Google Workspace. And it will be discussed by two speakers from the Philippines, Sir Julius Pumares and Sir Regiboy Di Pablo. On November 17, 2021, developing SIM and technique using modular and digital lesson will be discussed by two speakers from the Philippines. On November 18, 2021, we have the topic about statistics and probability, and it will be discussed by the two, two speakers from the Philippines also. On November 19, 2021, the topic is all about assessment and feedback monitoring tool in the distance learning, and we have a speaker from the Philippines. On November 21, 2021, morning session, the topic is all about comics, linguistics, and visual language, the past and the future of a field. And it will be discussed by a speaker from India. Okay, once again, our code for tonight's session is all cups IGP4546. So please uh, write it down in a piece of paper and keep it for you. Or you can be able to take a screenshot in your cell phone or in your laptop so that you can uh, download your e-certificate anytime you want. Always remember that without code, no one is eligible for any certificate. Okay, so to our dear participants and to our speakers, thank you so much for joining with us tonight. And before we end our session, let us have the short uh, reflection. Do not let this pandemic hinder your success to grow. Never allow it, allow it to stop you from achieving your dreams in life. Instead, let us look at the positive side and think of how we can be able to adjust and adapt with the changes brought by pandemic. Remember, it is through pandemic that we were not able to interact physically, but it is also through this pandemic that we were able to learn 
how to utilize these learning platforms to connect and communicate with great people in the whole world by having webinars like this for free. And of course, that is brought to you by IGP. And there are so many things to be thankful for. Thank you, everyone. And thank you so much, IGP. We hope to see you all again in the upcoming webinars. Stay happy. Stay safe, everyone. And once again, from Auckland, Philippines, I am your host. I am Mr. Rian Jun P. Calling, signing off.